Now, if I was to say the word bank to you right now, what would go through your head? I think for a lot of people, it would send shivers down the spine. Uh, We think of things like big profits. We think of huge bonuses to the top echelons within the banking. We we were talking here about pillar banks. And and for, for many years in this country, there's been four or five pillar banks. And we all hear the stories of how all of these banks are getting rid of their counter staff. If you want to open accounts, it's very difficult. If you go into a branch, you're now met by one person who'll tell you how to use a machine. A lot of people say you've got to make appointments to see the bank managers. It's a big change from the old days of banks. And when you look at the model of banking in Germany, it's a far cry from the type of banking we have in this country. And I'm joined on the line this morning, and I'm delighted to have with me Seamus May. He's chairperson of the Public Banking Forum of Ireland. Now, the Public Banking Forum of Ireland is actually a voluntary uh, organisation that uh, produced a very interesting document called Creating Ireland's Alternative Banking Force. It was uh, publicly launched last March and uh, it's a very interesting concept in how we should be looking at our banking system in this country going forward. First of all, thanks very much, Seamus, for joining us. Yes, good morning, Tommy, and good morning to all your listeners. So tell me about how banks work in Germany. And when, when you consider that Germany, you know, is one of the largest economies in the world, I think the fourth largest, is it, in the yeah. world, what kind of a banking system do they have? Well, the, the German model is entirely different from the Irish model. Um, 70% of the German economy is, is banked or funded by public and community banking. Um, it, it, look, it's radically different than the model in Ireland in that in Ireland the pillar banks, basically uh, be Bank of Ireland and um, Ulster Bank, they, they have 95% of the market. In Germany, the pillar banks, Deutsche Bank, Commerce Bank, the, these banks, they have 12.5% of the market in Germany. And like the German, as you, as you just quite rightly said, the uh, German economy is the, by far the largest in Europe and it's the fourth largest in the world. And it has functioned on uh, a, a, a pillar of public banking for over 200 years. It has never had, the public banking model in Germany has never had a crisis, has never gone bust, has never needed a bailout. And, it's, it, it, and we, we in Ireland need, need to replicate that model. Why do, I mean, we all know we had to bail out our banks. Uh, we don't need reminding of that for sure. Um, and now the banks are, are back in profit again, and yet the public have never been more dismayed than they are now about our banks in general. So why are we not tackling the whole issue of how we organise and structure our banking in this country? Yeah. Well, it's a very interesting question. I mean, uh, not only the Public Banking Forum, but if you take the Competition Authority, the Competition Authority has said that the challenge for policymakers is to clearly distinguish between the interests of the banks, which can be expected to strongly resist restoring competition, and the interests of consumers and taxpayers, which, which lie in the maintenance of a stable and competitive banking system. Now, our banking system, our pillar banks, went spectacularly bust in 2008, m- mostly on the back of speculative lending and create, creating endless amounts of credit. The German, the German um, Sparka said that the public banking model in Germany, they don't loan for speculation, they don't feed the, the, the speculative bubble. And that's probably the, 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 the biggest difference between the two. And, you know, the, the, the Irish banks, as stands the Irish banking sector, is completely dysfunctional. In fact, it has become really a parasite on the socio-economy. We're supposed to be in the, in the single market is in the EU, yet in Ireland, and the way the government have gone about rebanking us, we're paying, we're, we all know we're paying double the interest rates, uh, the average interest rates uh, across Europe, but in actual fact, in many instances, we're paying quadruple. We're uh, small uh, micro-enterprises, small and medium enterprises, farmers, in many cases, are paying up to four times what their counterparts in France and Germany are paying. And the interesting thing is that, you know, the, the Irish government and the EU both recognised that there was state aid involved in bailing out the banks back in 2008, which would amount to illegal state aid effectively. But there was a quid pro quo, and that was that the government would introduce uh, competition into the banking sector. But like since then, Irish Nationwide has gone, Anglo-Irish has gone, ACC Bank has gone, ICC Bank has gone, Bank of Scotland Ireland has gone, EBS has gone. So we've actually done nothing to fulfil our stated um, objective, which was to bring uh, bring uh, 
comp- competition into the banking market in Ireland. But is part of that problem, Seamus, not that the old saying comes to mind, hard to teach the old dog a new trick, that we have such a mindset that we have to be in one of these pillar banks because they're state guaranteed and if a new, you know, a new company, a new bank comes into the market, we're sp- Speculative, you know, we're afraid to to put our money in there just in case, as a new player on the block, they might go bust. Yeah, well, we, like, there's two things about that. The, the public banking forum um, believes that. Uh, the problem, it, the problem is, is the, the body politic is captured by, by, the, by the body corporate, by the big banks, and there's far too much influence being exerted. And the, even if you look at the central bank, I mean, the central bank is supposed to be the guardian and the regulator of our banks, but we know what happened. I mean, the, the, the entire banking, pillar banking model went bust back in 2008. Now, we have in this country, we have the post offices and we have the credit unions. So we actually have the physical in- infrastructure and the people on the ground to very, very easily switch into a full-service banking system. Okay, well, let's talk about the post offices first, and I will come to the credit unions in a moment, because you you raise a very interesting point. Here we have post offices who, on post, are saying they're, they're losing millions. They're looking at staff cuts right across the service. So, I mean, if you're recommending that the post office is an alternative, it doesn't seem like the body language from those in the know suggests that they're going to take them as a serious player. Exactly. But we had a, we had a very similar situation to this in New Zealand. And in 2002 in New Zealand, the, the government set up the, the postal banks, it's called the Kiwi Bank in New Zealand. And since 2002, between then and now, the postal bank in New Zealand, the full-service banking operator, and it has now... Uh, 20% of the market in New Zealand. And whilst we uh, suggest that the, the post offices, along with the credit unions, could create uh, this new uh, public banking system, our, the preference of our forum, of the public banking forum, is that the post offices set up a standalone post bank exactly on the basis of uh, how the New Zealand people did it. And that would work? Uh, just a, a small little uh, piece that I was reading about the, the, the New Zealand model. Is that the postal banks are now thriving in New Zealand, not as a historical artifact, but as a popular innovation. When they were instituted in 2002, it was not to save the post office, but to save New Zealand families and small businesses from big bank pr- predators. So, so like we a mindset. There's a huge problem with mindset. There is, but there's also this huge problem. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but credit unions are not state owned or state financed. So, what if they go bust? Well, the very the interesting thing is that the government went about uh, rebanking Ireland by setting up the Strategic Banking Corporation of Ireland and the the, the Irish Infrastructural Fund, and these banks are on lending. They don't lend to you or me. They're on lending mainly to the pillar banks, AIB and Bank of Ireland. And they're loaning money to these banks at 0.8%. And the, the banks, the Strategic Bank Corporation, they're, they're um, guaranteeing 80% of the loans that the pillar banks make to you or me. And yet, the, the, the pillar banks are charging approximately 5 to 5.5% on money that they're getting at 0.8%. I mean, it's ludicrous. And the credit unions, on the other hand, are awash with cash. They're very, very strong financially, but they, they are being restricted by government and by the central bank. And this has been going on for decades. They cannot lend for mortgage purposes. They cannot do long-term lending. They, they, they can't do, uh, say, to uh, loan to private or limited companies. Uh, so they're, they're being severely restricted. So, and is there any government policy or any indication, even on foot of that creating Ireland's alternative banking force uh, document? Has anybody, you know, with power, looked at that document and said, you know, there's a lot of merit in this? Well, I suppose initially when this new government was formed we succeeded in getting public banking uh, onto the programme for government. And arising from that then, uh, the the joint department, uh, the Department of Finance and the Department of Rural Affairs um, began a, a joint consultation on the feasibility of community and public banking. Now, we submitted to that back in March last. Fifteen other groups and various people submitted as well. And we now await the department's uh, report on, on what they found or do they intend to promote the idea of um, public and community banking. The, the report is long overdue. 
And if they do, are they going to have to put substantial amounts of money in to put the right infrastructure in place that will really provide an alternative and competition to the pillars? Well, you know, the, the, the Sparkerson model um, and the Sparkerson people in Germany are estimating that we, we can have eight to ten pillar banks uh, set up, sorry, eight to ten public banks set up at a cost of 200 million. But, but it's not, that money doesn't have to come from taxpayers. I mean, the Irish Strategic Investment Fund is there, they, they, um, they, what they call the Strategic Banking Corporation of Ireland. The credit unions themselves are awash with money, and the EIB and the ECB both have money available. So this is not about money. This is just about uh, uh, a stroke of a pen. It's about the the body politic changing its mind and deciding that they're they're going to look after the people and not the pillar banks from now on. And I would say that almost the entire doll um, are fully behind the public banking uh, concept. Um, Fianna Fáil, I would say probably 50% of Fianna Fáil people are fully behind it, and that number is growing every day. Uh, the, the chairperson of the uh, Finance Committee, the Oireachtas Finance Committee, John McGuinness, he, he, he's from Fianna Fáil. John is wholly and completely behind the introduction of community and public banking. The stumbling block is with the, 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 the sitting government, with, with Fine Gael, and that's, that's the problem that we have to get across. And do you think, Seamus, part of the problem of the dragging of the heels by the body politic is that just the fear of another collapse like 2008? No, that, that, that apps couldn't, couldn't be more, more off the mark there because uh, there, there will be no, no... Public and community banks don't collapse. If we implement the Sparkerson models the German model in Ireland that don't collapse. The fear is that there will be a collapse. There's a fear that our current pillar banks are hurtling exactly down the same direction as they went in 2008, uh, creating a credit. Uh, the cost of housing has gone too high. The cost of credit is too high. And, you know, we're hurling for another collapse. And the funny thing is that now we have the new European bail-in laws, which means if our banks collapse again, they take our money. They take depositors' money. And, unfortunately, the credit unions have most of their money lodged on deposit with the pillar banks, Bank of Ireland or AIB. And would you know, all of these public community banks, do you think they would affect the bottom line profits of the pillar banks or can they work in tandem? Well, uh, <laughs> I suppose there's two answers to that. They will work in tandem because uh, we will we, we'll have, have to. We yeah. have to. But will they affect the profits of the community banks? Uh, yes, yeah, of the pillar, pillar banks. Yes, of course they will. Because our banks are charging too much. We're being ripped off with interest rates in this country. In Germany, the Sparkus banks, which is one of the biggest banks in the world, are currently their interest rate on a 30 year mortgage with 10 years fixed at 1.1%. And they're doing loans. Uh, business loans at 3%. And I know many, many, many people that are paying 15% for business loans, but they, they're, they're disguised as overdrafts because the banks say, oh, no, we can't give you an overdraft or a loan, but sure, we'll give you, a, we'll give you um, an overdraft. So, I mean, that, that's, that's where we are. We're paying four to five times for money what our counterparts are in Europe. It's a very, you, know, you, you make very interesting points. Uh, I just don't know why our government aren't, you know, clinging on to this and saying this is the way forward. Uh, it, it beggars belief, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an absolute no-brainer. If you sat down across from a politician, bring a, a Fine Gael politician into the studio and, and ask him, even let him have a look at our report and see where we're all coming from. But this is a no-brainer. If our indigenous economy is to thrive... We must change our banking system. What we have now, uh, uh, boosting the balance sheets of pillar banks is incompatible with driving our indigenous economy. Yeah, and uh, can the ordinary person do anything to change the psyche? I mean, can they talk to, go into the clinics and say to our TDs and politicians, look, look seriously at the public community banking model? Yes, I think, I think it's up to ordinary people to do that. Everyone must mention this to their politicians. There's going to be an election before too long. Uh, it, it looks that that's inevitable at the moment. But also, there's over 3 million members of the credit unions. And like the credit union movement is, is, a, is a little bit um, sort of disparate in that there's the Irish League of Credit Unions, there's the Credit Union Development Association, there's the Credit Union Managers Association, and then there's the members. And I think it's incumbent upon the members to ask wh- wh- whoever it is that the, the League or CUDA or, or the, the, the Credit Union Managers Association, please take steps to change the banking system in Ireland and protect, protect the long-term future of the credit unions as well.
By the way, people are texting in to say, what's your agenda? I mean, this is a voluntary organisation. There's nothing in this for you. No, the, we, the people that from the Public Banking Forum, I, I wasn't first to form it. I, I joined in 2014. Uh, better people than me were there beforehand. And, and we just looked at the dysfunctionality of the banking system and we looked at the alternatives and we found, yes, there is an alternative. So we, just, we're, we get nothing out of this. We go to meetings and, and we drive to Dublin, we drive to Atlone for meetings and we put our own diesel in the car and we eat our own food and nobody gives us expenses. So we, we don't have an agenda other than for the betterment of the people of this country. All right, well, if people want to know more about uh, the, the, the concept of public community banking, you do have a website, don't you? You're... Yes, indeed, yeah. It's www.republicirelandbank. Republic Ireland Bank, Bank. Dot, dot IE. IE. Seamus, it's been very interesting talking to you. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you very much, Tommy. Not at all. Much Good to talk to you. Not Bye-bye. at all. That's Seamus May there, chairperson of the Public Banking Forum of Ireland. It makes an absolute, complete, 100% sense. But sadly, when you talk to the politicians, um, why they're dragging their heels on it, as Seamus says there, it's a no-brainer. But there you are. That's Seamus May. Thank you, Seamus, for joining us on the show. Before